This is a holodeck, a fictional device from the Star Trek franchise, which is used to create a realistic 3D simulation using holograms. One of its features is the matter replicator, which enables the creation of real physical things that people can interact with, which is why the holodeck is the best representation of the ultimate display, a concept introduced by Ivan Sutherland in 1965, which states, the ultimate display would of course be a room within which the computer can control the existence of matter. Now, we are far from the 22nd century to indulge in this kind of technology, but we have the next best thing, and it is not virtual reality, but something that is called augmented virtuality, and in this 10th session of our extended reality lecture series, we will explore why. As we have discussed previously, these two terms were introduced as early as 1994 in Milgram and Cascino's paper called A Taxonomy of Mixed Reality Visual Displays and something that is called the Reality Virtuality Continuum. Now, we have covered this topic in our previous video in this lecture series, which you can find in the description below, but in short, they explored this continuum between the real world and the virtual world through the means of visual displays. Within such a scope, they introduce virtual content and specify that if the real environment is enhanced by virtual elements, that is augmented reality. And if the virtual environment has some awareness or inclusion of real world objects, then that is called augmented virtuality. In order to try and grasp our head around the difference between these two terms, we can take a look at the following example. Here we see a virtual object of a tea kettle that is overlaid over a real depiction of a surrounding with a person holding a cup in the hand. By the previous definition, this is definitely augmented reality. But what happens if we do something like this, make all the real depictions blurry? Does this become augmented virtuality then? By slapping a painterly overlay over the camera image depiction, they can make everything look like it is virtual environment that is based on the real world objects which we can say is augmented virtuality, or can we? On another note, we can say that this is just superimposition augmented reality, which is a type that uses filters to attach virtual elements onto real objects, as is the case with Snapchat filters. So in order to answer the question, we turn to the researchers who were trying this approach out in 2005 as a stylized augmented reality for improved immersion which is why we have to revisit the reality virtuality continuum and introduce the concept of immersion to explore this topic further. One of the immersion factors is definitely light, which enables the virtual elements to respond to the light change in the room by using light estimation to cast a shadow or lower the intensity of the light in the virtual scene. Another factor that contributes to the immersion is definitely plane occlusion. This is a technique that allows us to make the virtual objects appear like they are not just pasted on top of real footage, but are actually behind an object in the real environment based on the planes that we have detected already. Finally, we can introduce reflection as an immersion factor. Since when it comes to shiny surfaces, we expect them to reflect the world around them. This is something we can solve by using the camera real-time feed and using it as a texture for the reflection probe. However, these factors contribute to better immersion within augmented reality, but is it possible to incorporate it into augmented virtuality, or AV for short? As we have said, augmented virtuality is a type of experience along the virtuality continuum that enhances the virtual environment with real-life elements. So, in this research, a person's hands are used as real elements through visual body feedback to explore greater sense of presence or immersion. This is achieved by placing a camera on the head-mounted display and using the images without depth perception to extract the hands in this case and lay them on top of the virtual environment that is being shown to the user. However, this concept of immersion is closely related to our senses and their interconnectivity within our perception process. In order to test this out, we can take a look at the following example. I will briefly show an image and then let you determine whether you see something out of the ordinary. Ready? Now you can pause the video and take a closer look later on, but it's likely that a majority of you noticed that there are two sets of numbers, number five and number two. But have you noticed that the set of twos is arranged in a triangle or seen the twos in a different color than the fives? If that is correct, you may have synesthesia, 
which is a perceptual phenomenon in which stimulation of one sensory or cognitive pathways leads to involuntary experiences in a second sensory or cognitive pathway. In simple terms, it is a neurological phenomenon that causes sensory crossover, like painting with all the colors of the wind. So with that in mind, we can go over to another example where we have a bunch of frozen popsicles. And the question is, which popsicle would you say is the sweetest of them all? I can give you a moment to consider and you can pause the video and write your answers in the comments below. However, the chances are high that you pick the red one since its color is wired into our brain to consider it as something sweet, like strawberries. And that was the premise of this research with hot chocolate and cups, where the results showed that the orange cup with a white interior and dark green color cups enhanced the chocolate flavor of the drink and consequently improved people's acceptance of the beverage. Now, if we take the same logic of the real life objects being cut out and laid over the virtual environment, we can use different surroundings and lighting to influence the taste of the food as has been done in this research of contextualizing tasting experiences. But one issue of cropping real world objects still exists. And it is more prominent here where the sense of presence or immersion is diminished with the flickering and imprecise masking around the human figures. So this might be a good time to analyze this example where we can see a perfect masking around the real world figure that is laid onto the virtual environment with the present interaction shown. Of course, this is done through the action of chroma key compositioning or chroma keying, which is a visual effects and post-production technique for compositing or layering two or more images or video streams together based on color hues, where green and blue screens are mostly used. We can explore chroma keying to gain insight and knowledge into the process of connecting virtual and real objects and use it to enhance immersion in augmented virtuality. So when it comes to using a green screen, the light is reflected well, but it leads to color bleeding on the subjects, which can be an issue during the chroma keying process later. However, blue screens, on the other hand, do not produce undesired color bleeding, but require stronger lighting as the blue color is dimmer than the green one. Both approaches require certain amenities and extra work after the editing process, which is not as efficient as it could be. However, the biggest issue when it comes to chroma keying is the motion parallax, which refers to the fact that objects moving at a constant speed across the frame will appear to move a greater amount if they are closer to an observer or camera than they would if they were at a greater distance. This is especially significant in order to generate a really immersive experience, and it really shows when it is not done correctly. However, if we can somehow perform the compositing of two streams, the real and the virtual, in real time with active motion parallax, we are basically generating a time and resource efficient workflow referred to as virtual production. This is a filmmaking method that combines virtual and physical worlds with the use of monitors or OLED screens and a virtual camera. This combination produces the adequate lighting without the need for chroma keying since it is recorded as such, while the real life camera is tracked in the virtual space to produce the proper motion parallax in the background and create a more immersive experience. This is the same approach for the production of the Mandalorian series by using the volume, which is a large set created by using screens that produce adequate lighting and reflections, which are an important factor for the main character's gear. However, motion parallax is created only from the camera point of view and not from the user's perspective. So the question remains, is it possible to combine the features of virtual production to create an immersive augmented virtuality? And the answer is yes, by using the cave. Before we explain how cave is the most similar thing to the holodeck nowadays, we can take a look at Plato's allegory of the cave located in the book seven of the Republic and see how it explains the cave for augmented virtuality. In his book, Plato describes the prisoners being chained up in a cave since birth and experiencing life through a series of shadows cast by people walking in front of the light that is located behind them. One day, one of the prisoners is unchained and goes out of the cave to experience the world outside. He is faced with the new truth that all the things around him are real, while the shadows are mere reflections created from the main light source, the sun, which he finds very confusing. He goes back to the cave to share his knowledge, but the bright light has dumped his ability to see the faint shadows, which makes the other prisoners believe that he has gone insane and violently declined to be unchained or to accept new things. People are not just comfortable in their ignorance, but also hostile to anyone who points it out. 
This allegory is connected to the theory of forms in the sense that as the shadows on the wall are just mere reflections of real things, real physical things are just mere reflections of ideal forms and notions like beauty, perfection, or roundness. However, in the sense of augmented virtuality, the cave, which stands for Cave Automatic Virtual Environment, is created to offer a similar experience of creating real images on the wall around us that are mere reflections of the virtual objects we want to depict as three-dimensional in an immersive virtual environment. In order to achieve this, we can borrow a similar setup from virtual production by using framing to support the 72 near seamless passive stereo off-axis optimized 3D LCD panels that are then used to portray the images. The images changed based on the user's position within the cave, with each eye receiving one of the two images needed to create a stereoscopic vision. On the other hand, we can keep the glasses for depicting virtual images, but avoid using screens, substituting them for projectors instead that can cover both the ground and the wall behind the user, offering a more immersive experience. The space needs to be larger to accommodate for extra equipment, which is why sometimes mirrors can be used to shorten the size of the room or the space necessary for the cave implementation. It can allow multiple users to simultaneously participate if the refresh rate of the visual output system is sufficiently high, allowing for various interactions within a scene by using various input devices. One such device that can occur within a cave system is a wand with a specific set of markers on it that can be tracked by the system cameras. By doing so, the users can not only move by themselves within the environment, but move by creating an interaction through the wand. However, there is a possible problem that can arise with this type of interaction called motion sickness, which can occur when our brain cannot perceive two signals that are reporting different events. For example, while riding a car and observing a stationary seat in front of us, our brains can perceive the world where we are not moving, while our inner ear is sending information that tells the brain that the opposite is true. Same event can happen when a large screen has a very fast pan, where our eyes can send a signal that can make the brain think we are moving, while the inner ear says otherwise. So, is CAVE the system that is closest to the holodeck technology, or can we work through all the problems and create a hybrid solution, as is present here, where the real and the virtual environments are identical, and the user can have free movement and interaction within the scene with no motion sickness, while being able to depict various virtual environments with different stylizations and levels of photorealism? What do you think is the technology that can allow maximum immersion, interaction, and minimal effort? Let us know if you think there is something that we can use today that is close to the holodeck technology. If you found this topic useful and helpful, consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow and be able to produce more content similar to this. Join us next time when we dive deeper into the interaction concept inside extended reality. I thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.